Chapter 3.2, or section 3.2, 3.2.1 3 is the classic image problem. And uh, this is the classic image problem, so I'm going to try to draw this one big. I don't want to draw it too small. So we have uh, some charge Q um, sitting above an infinite plane, which I'm going to represent with a, with a rectangle, which does not do it any justice. Infinite planes extends everywhere. Um, and so it's sitting a certain distance um, of D above that plane. And then because of that charge, obviously to cancel out the electric field within the conductor, um, make sure the potential is constant, there's going to be some accumulation of charge to kind of cancel out that field. And um, the question is, is what is the potential above that plane? How does it, how does it work? We're not worried about anything below the plane, we're just worried about everything above. Um, we, we know it's not uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Q over um, R, because that would create, you know, below the plane, you'd still have a, a potential, you'd still have electric field and stuff. So it's definitely not that. Um, the total V, the, the total potential is due to whatever happens on this plane and this charge, of course. And um, so we basically want to solve Poisson's equation uh, where we do have a charge density. So we have a nebula squared v is equal to, um, uh, what did I want to write this out? I think it's rho over epsilon naught, or negative rho over epsilon naught, positive or negative. Quick, 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 quick. Um, notes, don't fail me now. Okay, if this video survives, this is one of those panic moments I have that you never see. Um, Poisson's equation, Poisson's equation, Poisson's equation. Negative for plus. Okay, I have it on the wall. It's negative. It is negative. Okay. Curses for not memorizing stuff better. Um, now I lost my page. Okay. So Poisson's equation for z above zero. So anything above the plane. We're not worried about below the plane. We have boundary conditions at infinity. Um, it's grounded. So remember grounded means the potential is zero. At, uh, at the plane and at infinity. All right, so um, so we, um, we can use the uniqueness theorem, uh, number one, to guarantee us one solution if we find any solution, right? Um, and if you tried to like brute force this one, you would get nowhere quickly. So we're not gonna solve this problem, this is too hard. So we're gonna solve a different problem. We're gonna pretend that we have a charge above, uh, you know, the z-axis, certain distance d, and then below that, uh, at the uh, distance d, we have a, a negative charge equal and opposite. And uh, lo and behold, uh, if you calculate the potential for this, which is um, v equals one over four pi epsilon naught times uh, the positive charge divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. I didn't leave enough room, plus z minus d squared, minus the charge over square root, that should be enough, x squared plus y squared, plus z plus d squared. Um, when you set z equal to zero, guess what you get? Well, that becomes zero, that becomes zero. You have, um, this becomes plus d squared, this becomes plus d squared, and so you have Q over this minus Q over the same thing, you have zero. And so we've satisfied the boundary conditions. Well, also at infinity, when you know you go off in any direction, the denominator grows and grows, it becomes zero. So we satisfied the boundary conditions with this equation, even though we solved a completely different problem, which is the beauty of the uniqueness theorem. Um, so we are done. That was a quick video. Hope you enjoyed it.